Welcome to Art Stars Explores, our province of play. My name is Kay Slater, and I'm the gallery coordinator and preparator at Art Starts in Schools. Every month, we pick a new theme to explore together through art making and play. In these workshops, you can watch along any time you have time to make, or listen, or just watch. We encourage young people, families, and creative people of all ages to join us every week on Saturdays at 11 a.m. as we release a new episode. These videos are for you. Whether you want to join us on Saturday when they become available, or any time you want to make. We're so glad you're watching. Have you missed a week? Check out artstarts.com slash explores dash online or any of our videos on YouTube or Facebook to check out an episode you've missed. Okay, let's explore together. Before we begin making, let's review the three rules of explorers. We've got rules in quotes here because they're less rules and more like guidelines or things that we like to have in mind before we start making together. First is respect. We practice respect for ourselves by checking in with ourselves every day before we start making. Maybe we didn't have a good night's sleep or we're feeling really good today. Whatever it is, we want to take the time to check in with ourselves. We also practice respect by doing the same thing for each other. And if we're not making alone, we're making with other grown-ups, or other youth, or friends, or classmates. We want to practice respect by asking them how they're feeling as well, so we can be mindful of each other while we make together. Another way we practice respect is with our tools. That can be about putting them away when we're all finished or using them safely. If somebody else is waiting for a turn to use a tool, we can use our words or our signs and share. We can respect each other by asking how long they'll need the tool so we can move on to something else, or if we need it now, we can let them know when we will be done and tell them we will pass them the tool when we're finished. We can also practice respect by acknowledging the land so this space that you see here is my studio space. And I'm on the stolen or unceded territories of the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh nations as an uninvited guest on these lands. One of the ways I practice respect is by acknowledging where I'm coming from and to be respectful of the lands, waters, and to the indigenous people who are here and who have been here since time immemorial while I have access to these lands. You can practice respect by finding out the territories and lands where you are watching and making from today, and by being the best guest you can and respecting the host nations, the lands, and waterways where you live. The second rule is that nothing is for keeps. I encourage you whenever possible to take things from the recycling bin. You can take paper that's already been drawn on, or has writing on the back, or is ripped, and then you don't have to feel worried about ripping it up yourself, or crumpling it, or just trying something out. It doesn't have to be good or perfect the first time, because it's not for keeps. And when we're all finished, I encourage you to take it apart. That helps really make it so that it isn't for keeps. Because if you know you're going to take it apart at the end, you don't have to make any finished thing. You can try all the things and ways of making. Our last rule is no expectations. If we're not expecting something to turn out good, or even to turn out bad, we're open to it going in a whole bunch of different ways. And that means that all respectful and creative ideas are good regardless of what happens after we try something. If you already know how something is going to turn out, if you've done it before, we can be open to trying something completely new and practice surprise. And if it doesn't turn out, that's okay. It's not for keeps. These are the three rules that we like to keep in mind when we explore together every week. Okay, let's get making together.
Hello everyone, and welcome to Art Starts Explores. My name is Kay Slater, and I'm the gallery coordinator and preparator at Art Starts in Schools. This week, we're gonna continue our exploration on tracing. In previous weeks, we've explored tracing um, using light. And so we've uh, taken pieces of paper and we've put them on a window or a light box um, and used the light from underneath to transfer an image from one page to another. This week, we're gonna explore a different kind of tracing. We're going to be tracing objects. And so there's no need to have a window or a light box. Um, we're gonna be placing things on top of our page uh, rather than underneath. Um, and really, sky's the limit. Anything that we can find, we're gonna, we're gonna try tracing. So for this week's exploration, some of the things that I have gathered, and if you want to make or follow along with me, you can check to see if you have any paper. This is paper I grabbed from my recycling bin. Um, some of it's ripped, some of it's already drawn on, some of it's cardboard, some of it's wrinkled, some of it's ripped. It doesn't really matter because everything that we're making today isn't for keeps. We're just trying things out. And when we're all finished, we're gonna put it back into the recycling bin. So it doesn't have to be clean new paper. Do you have any mark making tools? And that can be anything from a pencil to crayons, pencil crayons, markers, lipstick, pudding, anything that marks a page. I brought out my bit of markers here because uh, it's easier for the camera to pick up marks that I make on a page using markers, but you can use anything that you want. Then I have this dotted line here, which means that everything down here is uh, optional. You don't need to use them. In fact, I might not even use all of these objects as we um, explore today. But if you have a pair of scissors, um, that can help you uh, cut up some of the things that you've traced and then bring them onto other pages. I love ripping paper, so um, I probably won't use my scissors. I'll probably just rip paper if I want to um, isolate or pull things off of one page onto another. But if you have a pair of scissors handy and uh, it's safe for you to use them, then that's great. If you have some objects that you want to trace, so something in particular that you want to trace, um, whether that's um, a toy or a, um, a cool shaped object, um, but really anything that you can find around. You don't have to have something super interesting. Um, it could just be your hand or your arm or your foot. And we'll see what can go from there. So if you have something in mind to trace, great. If not, don't worry about it. We'll come up with some ideas together. And then last I've put tape or glue. And so um, because I'm not, or because we are not doing anything for keeps, um, it doesn't really matter if we glue things down or we tape things down because we're gonna throw them in the recycling bin after we're done playing and trying things out. But if you have some tape or glue handy and you have permission to use it, that can help you when you are isolating, ripping, or cutting pieces out to affix them to another page as you continue to layer and trace other things. But it's under the dotted line, so it's only if you have it available. I have them here, but we'll see if I'm going to use them as we explore together. Okay, I'm going to move some of these stickies out of the way so we have a bit more room. You know who I am. Yes, we are going to be tracing objects. All right, so I'm going to take a piece of paper that already has a drawing on it. Maybe I'll flip it to the other side of the page, but I could totally just use the side that is already there. In fact, because these marks are in pencil and I'm going to be using marker, I'll leave it this side up. I feel like using purple today. So remember before I said that uh, if you had something you wanted to trace, you could go for it, but that if you didn't have anything in mind, you didn't have to worry about it because we can just trace our body. Tracing our body is a really awesome way to start mark making on a page, especially when we're really not sure how to start. We're not really sure what we want to draw. We want to draw, but we're not sure what. 
This helps us get a mark onto the page. It can be fun to translate your body onto, um, onto a page and then see what you notice, but it also is just a fast, easy, free, and available thing to do. You always have your hand or your arm or your leg or your foot or whatever part of your body you decide to trace with you wherever you go. So you just have to find some paper and a mark making tool. I'm going to start tracing my hand onto my piece of paper. But my challenge is, is I'm going to draw for two whole minutes without stopping. I'm just going to keep tracing my hand. When I'm done tracing it one way, I'm going to try and trace it in another way. I'm going to keep it all on one page, but I'm going to continuously draw for two minutes. Let's go. There are no rules or right or wrong way to do this. You could change colors. You could position your body in different ways. How many ways can you trace your body onto the piece of paper you're using? I've been drawing with my right hand. What if you draw with the hand that you don't usually write or draw with? What happens if you don't use your hands to trace? you notice as you're making your lines. Let's draw for a couple more seconds to do it for a whole minute. Okay, that's two minutes for me. If you want to keep drawing and coloring and tracing your fingers or hands or arm, or whatever body part you decided to trace, go for it. Did you use a marker? Do you notice that you've got marker lines on your hands now? What do you notice? If you didn't use a marker and you put them on the page, what do you notice? What's different about drawing or tracing something over and over again on a page versus just tracing it once. What did you do that was interesting What did you do that you don't actually like? Are there any shapes that you can find that you enjoy? I think that's how I'm going to explore my tracing next, is I'm going to take another color that I haven't used yet, and I'm going to look for shapes on this page that I like. Let's go for about a minute and see if we can find any shapes that we like from what we traced. If you want to keep coloring and drawing, you could keep going. You could use different color markers. You could go back in with the markers that you've already used and keep finding shapes. What would happen if you were to fill up the whole page with different colors? 
for me, I just wanted to see these interesting green shapes. I really like them. I don't know if I ever would have tried making these kind of shapes if I hadn't just used my fingers. I don't think I ever would have come up with these shapes if I hadn't used my fingers to come up um, with these with this random pattern. I'm going to translate some of the shapes that I colored in here to this page here. So I had kind of this half moon, had this interesting like teardrop, and then another teardrop here, but it came down and over to the side. I had this kind of like blob. Oh, I had kind of another half circle, but like a backwards D. Another teardrop. Kind of like that the line went through it right there. The line went through this one over here. Oh, and this one over here. And then uh, this mark down here. Kind of a, an off balance bowl. And then a triangle over here. So none of these are shapes that I ever would have drawn by myself without coming up with this um, inspiration beforehand, this warm up using my hands. I didn't have to pick anything fancy. I didn't even have to have an idea in mind. I just used what I had available, which were, in this case, my, my hand to put down some marks. Then I had something interesting on the page to start exploring. From here, I could take each one of these objects and turn it into something else. I could keep tracing my hand on top of this page, or I could go back into this page and keep coloring. I'm gonna see what happens when I keep coloring this page, but I'm gonna turn on my time lapse so that it goes a little bit faster so that you can check out what happens. I encourage you to try doing the same thing, uh, coloring your page as well, as much as you can get done in the time it takes me to uh, fill my page right now. Let's see what happens. Finishing off with my favorite color, orange. Okay. Now, because I sped up the time on my camera so that I could go really, really fast, you're probably still coloring your page and that's okay. You can stop to check out what I did or you can just keep coloring. But as you color, what do you notice? What do you notice about your drawing? What I notice is that I can't really tell that this is my hand, especially as I turn it around. You could go and show somebody else who didn't make with you and ask them what they see. Do they see your hand? This really is a fun way when you want to make something or color something or just make a mark and you really can't think what to draw. You're a part of this drawing. You couldn't make this drawing without your body. So it's not really scribbles, the same way as if you just put scribbles on the page. You intentionally traced your body to make these marks. You are a part of this picture. And that's pretty cool. Okay, so what do we do with this tracing? In fact, sorry, just one second, I see these pieces right here, they need some color, I just want. And you're allowed to go back in as many times as you want when we're making like this. You make the rules, right? So if you see a section that needs more color, 
and then you go for it. There we go. That makes me feel better. Just too much white space around the edge. I'm gonna leave that white part there. Okay, so what can you do with a cool image like this? You could leave it like this. Remember, we were just trying things out and exploring. You could throw it into the recycling bin. What this also lets you do is have this kind of cool random background that lets you get started with another picture. So I'm gonna make this my background. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take, hmm, I'm gonna take these shapes. No, I want those shapes to live by themselves. I actually really like this. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take another piece of paper and again, I'm gonna draw my fingers, but you can, you can trace whatever you want. But this time, I'm gonna be very intentional. I'm going to trace them as specific objects. So what I want is I want some long, tall objects. And because I've been looking at my fingers, I recognize that they can make that shape on the page. But I mean, if you also look at your, your hand, it also makes this really cool U shape. It makes this cool V shape. So just tracing your hand. Oh, that's cool. This kind of makes like a, a cave that somebody can go in. Just by tracing your fingers, you can come up with all these cool ideas that you might not have had before you started making marks. Yeah, I like that. Maybe there's a little bird sitting up. <laughs> okay, so to get back to these, uh, these shapes over here. So I wanted these long shapes because I think what I want is I want some people. Let's make some sure uh, this person's okay as well. This person has some ears. Person has a bow tie. Person has buttons. This one's got a pocket. Maybe buttons as well. There we go. And I got some arms. And there you go. So using my fingers again, I was able to create these uh, these characters. So now I could take my scissors, or I can rip the page and. If you have made with me before, you know I do love to rip paper. So I'm going to rip out my characters. There we go. I'm going to isolate each one. I could get really tight, especially if I was cutting with scissors, I could get really uh, close to uh, teach of these characters, but I'm gonna do just a really rough job because I kind of like this rough white space around the outside, but that's up to you to decide what you like. Maybe try it. Start by ripping and see how you like it. And if you don't like it, you could use your scissors afterwards. Because that's all we're doing when we explore together, right? We're trying out different things. Okay, so now I've got this really interesting background. Doop, doop, doop. To bring my characters on. And while it would have been fine for me to just, you know, trace my hand and put my characters on a white piece of paper, it's way more interesting to have my characters on this cool background. And also, because I already used my fingers or these shapes in this uh, background, they're kind of repeated here. And so there's a, a cohesion, a symmetry, a connectiveness. Um, they match, they look good together because the lines and the marks that I've made are the same. What did you trace? Did you trace your hands? For your body, did you trace another object? If you traced another object, you could do the exact same thing as what I did here. 
So your background is made up of a whole bunch of versions of the object that you traced. And then you can take a single version I think I kind of like the bottom of this too. There we go. And now use that shape. What do you see from having traced that? I kind of see a piece of toast. I really like, I really like making characters out of objects that I trace. And you don't have to keep it in one direction either, right? It doesn't have to be the same direction as you traced it. What if you turn it around? Oh. Now I kind of see an ear here and kind of like a nose over here. Yeah, there we go. So now I got a bear, right? Again, you there. Rawr. <laughs> just from tracing an object. So the object doesn't have to be the same. I mean, I could take uh, an object and just trace it as an example to help me learn how to draw it. So now I'm gonna put it over to the side here. All right, so it has this belt loop right here on the side of it. Um, and then the color kind of comes over here and then down this way. And swoops up here. There's a circle over here. What else is there? Oh, there's these screw marks. Or sorry, the places where the screws are installed here. I'm just going to color this in dark. Oh, it looks like there's a screw in there as well. Belt loop comes down like this. And then there's this, um, this depression, this, this area where it falls away here, and it's beveling. And, here. and there you go. And so I could color this in now. And sure, that, that, can be, that can be fun and interesting, especially if you're gonna spend some time looking at your object and figuring out, oh, how would I draw this? Oh, now that I'm looking at it, the switch over here at the side should be colored in. There we go, there's the switch. The more I look at it, the more interesting things I notice. There's the silver that came down like that, there we go. And so just taking the time to trace something and then uh, building it in on the inside is, is great to learn how to do it. But I really like, um, when, when I do something unexpected. And so like coming up with this bear shape from a tape measure, that's going to be unique to you. If you and a friend or you and another grown up, or you and a sibling were to trace the same thing, would you draw the same thing from the traced outline? Give it a shot. What else could I draw to see? what I could make. So I'm going to pretend I'm two different people. But if you have access to two different uh, people, you could totally play this game where you both quickly trace an object. I have like scissors here. So I'm going to trace my scissors. And you might not even decide to trace it the same way. It might be fun if you both start by tracing exactly the same, but that doesn't mean that, you know, one person traces it this way and another person traces it open or flipped in another direction. Well, I'm going to do it the same, just, just to see what happens. And also because I'm going to pretend to be two different people, but if you have two different people, you could try it both ways. One way where you have the same traced outside, uh, and then another time where you can trace it however you want, no restrictions. Okay, so, oh, I have two pieces of paper here. So this is person one, I'm going to go P1, and this is person two. Okay, move this over here, and what, what do we see? What do we see? Well, maybe person one rotates it to find out what they can see. 
What do I see? Oh, you know what? When I go like this, I see a sun. And I see a cloud. And I see a lake. There we go. There you go, it's raining into the lake. And so that's what I saw as person one, because I turned it around. But person two goes, oh, nope, I see a weird looking owl. There's I, there's I number one, and there's I number two, and there's the beak. And then I think I have some brown in here. And then here are the feathers. There you go. And then you come back together and you compare them and go, wow. Those were, those were the same thing, but we came up with completely different ideas. You can see how many different pictures you could come out by tracing the same thing before you um, have to duplicate. You'd be surprised. You'd probably be able to come up with a lot between two people. So this is a really fun way of um, answering the question, well, what should I draw? Sometimes it's hard to come up with an idea, but when we start putting some marks on the page, um, it gives us a, a starting point. It gives us a clue. It gives us some inspiration to get started. It can be really intimidating to look at a white page and go, especially if it's going to be a clean, perfect white page, you're not really sure where you want to start or what you want to, to mark on that page. It's another reason why I really like to um, draw and practice on paper that is already uh, ripped up or already has marks on it. Remember this page? This had pencil on it to begin with. Can you see the pencil marks anymore? So when we don't, uh, we don't restrict ourselves and we allow ourselves to really open up our brains to see what happens when we try things, sometimes we can come up with some really cool ideas. So tracing objects uh, is, is great for that. Also to help give you boundaries so that you can start deep looking at an object if you want to learn how to draw it, figuring out um, the container on the outside and then using your eyes to uh, fill in all of the details. That can be, that, that's, a, that's a really great way of doing it for planning your space as well. So if you had, um, you weren't really sure how you wanted to, um, to use your space but you don't want to fall off the edge of the page, use a container of an object and go, okay, I'm going to draw. I'm only going to draw starting in this circle to make sure that I don't run out of space on my page. I don't know if you can see this because it's in pencil. I'm going to go back to a marker. Here we go. Got this happy face. This character with this. Showtime. Arms. Pants and some funny shorts. There we go. And so by tracing a circle in the center of the page, I was able to line up my character so that um, I could take composition into mind. Also, this circle is really cool. All of a sudden, this um, this character is more interesting by having the circle on the page. Maybe there's a green spotlight behind them. Or maybe you decide to just cut out where you've traced because that's the, that's the most interesting part of your picture. There are lots of ways to explore tracing. And over this last month, we've only explored a few. I'm sure you can come up with lots of other ways. 
If you missed our previous weeks, you can check out our workshops online at artstarts.com slash explores dash online on our YouTube channel or on our Facebook at Artstarts. Like I like to do every week, I'm going to leave my camera running while I clean up my space so that we can get all ready to start making again next week. Thanks for making with me. See you soon.